Hello baby gangsters, this is Calvin, also known as Omer, and this is my first ever playthrough of Apollo Justice, the Ace Attorney. And, uh, Phoenix just dropped a whole bomb on us. Vincent might be the criminal here. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't at all. We didn't. Me talking as if I'm Phoenix. We're not Phoenix this time around, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, I think Apollo's great so far. But Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Uh, huh? There is a possibility after all. They may have met that night before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was uh, staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the court. Huh? The defense would like to request no such thing. Uh, actually, I am doing the defense here, Mr. Gavin. Did I say Vincent? Why did I say Vincent? His name's Kristoff. <laughs> Vincent. Your name is Vincent now, Kristoff, okay? <laughs> Why? Where did I get Vincent from? Uh, I know, oh, maybe I had Vincent Valentine on the mind today. That is always a possibility that, that a Calvin had Vincent Valentine on his mind at some point. Testimony is most related to the case. They do. What? How could anything happen before that game of poker be related? What do you want to. What? Motive! Motive! What? I'm not sure if I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss Orly. Orly. I assumed, uh, I, I might assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this. He is the defense, not you. Yes, we do not speak. No, we do not. Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Rice's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Rice's testimony? I trust. I trust. I trust Phoenix to give me the right testimony. Pun intended. This is Mr. Rice's strategy. He was planning this all along, and I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. Act hey, two, Justice. You would betray me, your teacher. I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Phoenix was always about that as well. And it must be tough for Apollo to have to, like, betray your uh, the person who's, like, taught you everything you know in favor of, like, uh, you know, finding out the, the truth. Very well, the defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. I love this artwork, man. I love the 2D artwork so much. That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. Shoddy Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left, so Kristoff was there before. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. What? So he was the one who hit him with the bottle. Hit her with the bottle. The girl was knocked out cold, and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming, cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Wait, so Gavin left? Mr. Gavin, you're at the Bosch Ball Club the night of the murder? I diamond around frequently. And you talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder? Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might uh, be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into a little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. It sounds like you were just trying to maybe cover something up, though. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. Sir. He's lying and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin vs. Mr. Wright, this can't end well. Why well, can't I have a normal trial? It's... Dude. Dude. No. <laughs> Don't even ask for that. Um, it's interesting because, like, obviously we want to ask about the, the, him, the, the girl getting hit with the bottle. And then we'll, like, go from there. Um, you know, I think what, what Apollo's gonna have to try and find now... Is that, you know, and he, what he should find now is, like, you know, that, like, it, you know... It, and, and if, if Chris, if Christoph was, if Vincent, if Christoph was a good, um, lawyer, you know, then it'd be very strange for him not to want to do this, because if he's not, if he is not to hide, he'd want to find the truth, you know? That's, uh, let's press this as well. We're gonna press the third statement also, but I wanna press this too. 
You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes, he dines with me at the Borscht Bowl quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot, as usual. Usual. I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see. Where Mr. Smith was sitting, the music's so good. It's so good. So the plates and such uh, on the table were from your dinner? Indeed. The remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, and Kristoff left after that. Um, Shadi Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. Should we talk about this as well? Because he left. Where did he go to? Five minutes? So the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time? That would have been a fateful encounter, to be sure. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. What was it you said? Christoph Gavin and Shoddy Smith may have met? I believe I did say that. Here I was all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear they just pass in the hall? Hmm. That does seem a little weak as pretense for murder. That's not what that's not what we're basing this whole thing on. Oh, would be, but if that were uh if that were all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? It's very strange for Phoenix to be doing this though. Obviously, like it's planned. But it's so weird seeing him as this like confident like being. About this failed trap. This is the same trap that Mr. Miss Olga Orly mentioned. Or really mentioned. I see keep saying Orly. The plan was simple, elegant, or elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. It was to plant a card in the right's pockets beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search right. He would then pull out the planted card, and the trap would be snapped shut. You swap the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. And what happened? Oh my god. Yes, a harmless prank in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A, a quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Why would you not think that he wouldn't do that? Like, for me, like, when I have a hoodie on, hands in the pocket is like default. You know what I mean? It's default uh, stance is hand in the pocket. The card she planted. Yes, she snuck a peek at it and found it was a five of hearts. I had a feeling something uh, might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon? Yes, I rolled up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, a battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. That sounds like a terrific drama. A card inside the murder weapon? That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Maybe it was Gumshoe. Oh, uh, what's up with you? Mr. Wright, the poker head of the courtroom number three. Approves. Of this battle of wits. So do we have to examine the bottle? Please revise your testimony with the new information. I discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. Um, let's take a look. Do we like examine the bottle? Can we examine the bottle? We can. Is there a card in there? No clues here. Huh? No clues here. Wait, what? Like there's nothing. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, I was like, what? <laughs> like, I could have seen it was empty for the top as well, but I guess I didn't really want to get right at the back. So now we know it's an empty bottle. The card's not here. Is that is that it? Is that we just had to present this? Objection! And be like, dude, where, where's the card? Uh, Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes. I've examined the bottle and I don't see any card in here. <laughs> I don't see any card in here. <laughs> um, no? No. What, Mr. Wright, surely isn't all you have to say for yourself. I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put that, uh, it did put it in the bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. What's so funny is, like, you can see the change in, like, Christoph Vincent's, uh, demeanor. Because, like, he, like, 
Like, he went from, like, trusting uh, Phoenix uh, to, to, like, you know, when there was a third person there, when there was all this stuff there, you know, he started trusting. But as soon as he, he came into the mix, all of a sudden, everything he's saying is delusional, you know what I mean? Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle, there was nothing. So what's going on? Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Hoodwink is a good word. Or did the car just disappear? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. Okay, dude. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. I'm gonna say this right now. Like, I I get that you're my, my, my uh, trainer or whatever. For me... I'm not gonna, like, I've anything I can do to get Phoenix Wright all out of jail or out of, like, going to prison, I'm doing it. Why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? We're not. Well, at least, at least, uh, Vincent, uh, is over here, isn't. That even Christoph and I had dinner, and we sat at the table in the photograph. Okay. Shadi Smith walked in five minutes after Christoph. I discovered the trap during the game. We already presented the ball on this. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I had, I left to call the police. You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor at that time? Not a soul. It was in the middle of the night, after all. So there, in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave the injured waitress alone. Okay, pretty straightforward. When I returned, he was dead. Blood streamed from a cut on his forehead. And when you returned, the victim was already dead, yes. I'll admit it. I was a little startled when I walked in. A little? I was bleeding from his forehead after all. I guess I'd be startled too if I walked in on a scene like that, but... How would he have... Hold on a second. How would he have um, seen it? When the, ha the hat was over the forehead. Right? Objection! How would he have seen it? Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes. Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see the blood in his forehead. Good point. <laughs> oh my god, we need more than this, Phoenix, please. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. See, now he's taking it personally. He's like, do it, dude, do it. Get in there. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Uh, I forgot to mention something. I was the one to put that hat on his head. Oh god, that's not good. Uh, uh, you... You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore through the entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in the photo this photograph. And? I picked the hat up off the floor and put it on his head. That's all, Phoenix. This is not good. This is not... This is not a good thing. All I can say is, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Mr. Really, Mr. really didn't see it? It being the victim's uh, head? I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed the, his head. Ah, uh, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? <laughs> Pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Right now, Phoenix ain't doing himself any favors. Right now, anyway. He's not doing himself any favors. Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Mr. Gavin? This witness testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. He lost it. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Christoph. I never knew. He lost his attorney badge. 
I believe it was you who threw the first stone. <laughs> Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. This must be so warped in Apollo's head as well, because Apollo, again, worships the ground that Phoenix w walks on, right? Worships the ground that Phoenix walks on, but all at the same time, like, he has to, like, you know... Like, right now he's seeing that not only has Phoenix lost his badge, but it's like this thing where it's like... Um... Like, Phoenix isn't telling the truth. He's doing this roundabout way of, like, getting to the truth. And it has to feel weird because, like, you know, everything you've ever learned about, like, being a lawyer, like, and the greatest lawyer pretty much of all time that you're looking at right now, and at least the most famous in your mind, is, like, doing this really weird roundabout trick to get the truth out. And right now it just looks like he's lying. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Huh? Wait. Wait! Wait! Because he never said that he didn't see to put the hat on his head, I suppose. That's not a lie, I guess. When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. Then just tell us! A reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night, recall that I spoke with the defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case, I recorded our conversation? What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. No, my god. Christoph, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good. He turned out to be- oh, that gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him hard. You mean, someone cracked that flawless bone china plate? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please, the cops should be here any minute. I mean, your hands should have come to that. Bone china plate? A kind of porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and not a plate, but hate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. So he knew about his balding forehead! He knew! The court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indicating my forehead. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Wait a second, something's not right about that phone call. So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left Borscht Bowl Club? Most certainly. Then, how did he know... When did he see this? Bone China... He, the hat was never off until... Oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Oh, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Christoph Vincent Gavin. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain to this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So this is your reason? The reason why you put the victim's hat back on? Your point, Mr. Gavin, it's such a... That's something so freaking insane. Like, that's actually a thing that Phoenix would kick, would catch someone for in another case. He would consistently do that stuff where it's like, Wait, I never said he had a bald head. Like, that's such like a, a Trials and Tribulations ending. It comes down to this, has it, Phoenix, right? Order! I will have order, Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor. I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear the defense attorney's Gavin's testimony? Uh, <clears throat> well, as the prosecutor, I... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes, after which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well, this will be our final recess of the day. Oh, we're getting to the final that When they say this in the game, I usually feel, feel like this means that we're ending, you know? April 20th, 2.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number three. One of the things is like that, that that's happened like with um recent ones I played, like I feel like they've extended the first trial in like the newer games uh, compared to what they were in uh because remember like with Ace Attorney uh the trilogy, the original trilogy, the first trials were like like maybe an hour and a half tops. And what's funny about that is that like it it's changed, I think, because usually they have less trials in the later games. They focus more on like the chunkiness of like little trials, but like I I don't know which I prefer. Do I prefer like the shorter trials first? For now, like the, it, it's going well. Like I, there's no problem with this pacing and there's no problem with the length of this. But like I wonder what you guys always think. Do you guys prefer when the first trial is shorter or when it's longer? 
Um, to me, like, it just has to be good. That's all I care about. Uh, 2 32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Three. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Ryder are both in the judge's chamber. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Oh! Huh? What? So this is uh, Phoenix's daughter? Please, pick a card. Holy hell. She looks so... So... So like Mia, right? Is that just me? Like, is that just, like, maybe I'm just, like, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm, like, like, I've been stopped in my tracks. She looks, to me, so like Mia. <laughs> like, is that just, like, like, maybe I'm just, like, I'm, like, like, I'm putting two and two together here, like, I'm making, uh, seven. But, like, or maybe I'm putting two and five together, making four. But the thing is, like, for some reason, like, I was stopped in my tracks just now at this girl who genuinely reminds me so much of Mia Faye. And, like, all these memories came flowing back to me. Pick a card. Okay, sure. Uh, what's all this about? Uh, this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely. And the game is yours. That's all. What? An ace. Oh, it's a blood-stained ace. This is the one from the pocket. Mrs. Miss Hand has three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It is five aces in all. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. The bloody ace. The missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? So there was blood on the ace before it was even... Oh my god, the music as well. You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's faith is in your hands, so this is... I know you can do it. For some reason, she looks so like Mia to me. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. The locket, yeah. And when I say uh, uh, Mia, by the way, I mean like Maya's older sister looks like Mia to me, right? Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, because sometimes like when I say something in a video, people will think I'm getting mixed up. Uh, I, but I, I, ge I genuinely mean Mia it looks a lot like Mia to me. Uh, like, because a lot of people are probably like, oh, well, you're thinking of Maya, Faye. And it's like, no, like I genuinely mean Mia as in the older sister who died. I, mean, I can't wait to examine this. Oh my God. I love this game, man. I love this game so much. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph, Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Will Mr. Uh, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. You should have seen the episode where we had a clown. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Fine, I'll play along. And like twin sisters d dyeing their hairs and doing crazy stuff on bridges and stuff. Uh, first, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact in Mr. Smith's ball. Look how cute he looks. Look how cute he looks. He's so clean. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have ignored her interest in it. Objection! Already? I will- Oh! <laughs> Phoenix is with us now? What? <laughs> I'll take it. I won't call it an order, Mr. Gavin. M Mr. Wright! What do you think you're doing right? Well, I think sure look different from this other side. Yeah, it's been seven years, huh? You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore the hat all night and never taking it off, except for that one time. That one time being the instant he was hit. 
Oh. When Mr. Wright returned from the reporting on the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to have been there in the hideout at the time of the crime. In other words, I must be the real killer. And I can, okay, is that what you're trying to say? Can I just say as well? Like, you could say like, oh, well, he could just guess he was balding. I genuinely was shocked when he was bald because I thought he was going to have like some like really crazy like slick back hair. Like when he took off the hat. So like really, I didn't know he was bald either. So not bad, Apollo. No, that, again, how good must I feel coming from Phoenix? Mr. Gavin, I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. Uh, what? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. You yeah, am afraid in the current situation, I see little reason to hide anything. Very well, allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us how you were you involved in the adventure of the Fable Night. Well, first of all, before we do anything, I kind of want to, like, we'll hear the testimony, but I kind of want to examine the, um... Um... The card first, actually. Because we just got that card. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. So she said this is going to be our trump card. As red, by the way. No clues here. Well, I thought that, like... No clues here. Okay, so we, we, know, we know it's just a bloody card. Okay, that's fine. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked to the truth of the window to the hideout. I must have been right after the murder took place. You peeked in the window? The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding the bottle in his hand. What? I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. So you were lying the whole time to protect Phoenix is what your, your stance is? So you witnessed the murder. For better or for worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantaged, disadvantageous to your client. Nice suit he has as well. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you did, just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity, right, Apollo? Oh. So he's saying we have him, like, in the corner. So, th so somehow we have to use this card as the trump card. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination not to defend it. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. That fateful night. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I turned to the club. Hold a second. Hold a second. That man? You mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course. But I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling. Which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know that they were friends after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might uh, be something coming to settle an old might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked through the little window in the hideout. Uh, we know you can peek through the window. It must have been the right, uh, right at the murder took place. The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. See, it's kind of like, like, do, do we press these as well? A bald head, an unconscious girl, and a right holding a ball in his hand. Okay, let's talk about this for a second here, because this actually stopped me as well. Because like now you're saying like you knew, you saw, you saw every, pretty much like that's a confirmation of what you saw. You know, those are the only three at the scene of the crime. Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. 
Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Oh, you're such a good person, Kristoff, but I guess who's a better person? It's Phoenix. Objection! Oh, there must have been someone else at the moment of this crime. I can, can I just say that, like, one of the things that we're noting about, noting about Apollo that was different from uh, the other protagonists we played as in their first trial, I really feel that Apollo is, like, you know, taking up, like, the, uh, the you know, the very, the, a more aggressive stance. Which I think is a nice breath of fresh air because you can't have every character just being like super timid in their first trial. He's like super like, not confident, but he's super like trying to be confident, trying to be, you know, smart about this. Uh, which is cool. I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah yes, the mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me, what possible reason did uh, the real killer have to swap our cards in the victim's hands? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary? How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out with the fifth ace. Yes, we have it. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Because it has blood on it because it has blood on it the reason why the car was swapped out now go ahead and point out your reason mr justice why did the killer take the fifth ace because it has their it has someone's blood on it their blood on it possibly my reason is this is that an ace why, it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? Oh, that's the first time we've seen him kind of like, you know, have a crack in him a bit. This is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be... Could this be the missing fifth ace? Inconceivable. How could you... What are you doing with that card? <laughs> well, uh, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card for some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Club, uh, Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. And I gave it to my daughter. Cards are a stock and trade after all. No. Impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud will be the one who took the real car from the crime scene, the real killer. So how would you know it's a fraud? Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the car from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take a look at this, the photo and the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell off on the floor and that trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose the killer then took the card to hide the blood. Objection. Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What are you talking about? You want to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, I've told you. The one drop of blood would have been de uh, decisive evidence. You see. Objection. This is baseless conjecture. Baseless! Objection. Oh, we're, we're objecting. Yes, we're objecting. Let's go, Apollo. Oh, no, it's not us. I keep getting mixed up. That's, that's Phoenix's voice. That's Phoenix's voice. I keep getting mixed up. I keep getting mixed up. People are going to be like, Ah, oh, Calvin, how can you not recognize Phoenix's voice? Man, it's been a long time since we've heard Phoenix's voice. It's been like two and three years, maybe almost, since we've heard Phoenix's voice. Uh, we haven't played uh, uh, with Trials and Tribulations since like, what, like 20... 21, maybe? Was that when we played Trials and Tribulations? That was... A, no way. Was it actually... Wait, hold on a second. It was August 2021 when we played Trials and Tribulations. 
What the hell? <laughs> what? Where has the time gone? I feel like I have lost that. Sorry, guys. We'll keep going, but that just made me feel like I lost my entire life. What the hell has happened? It was that long ago? Jesus. It's quite based. Did you see it? Quite, it's quite based. <laughs> I just noticed he said it's quite based. What? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood in a single car can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Yes. Try picturing the scene of the, the crime in your head. Oh man, this is sick. This is really sick. They're going all out with this type of stuff. I like I I prefer this type of stuff mixed in with the 2D for sure. For sure. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckiest victim, the luckless victim, was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the, a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with the scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? I love this song. Given that there was a drop of blood in the card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? Given there's a drop of blood in the card. So, like, we're saying that... So this is, uh, right, is in this chair. And then we're saying the victim is in, is the victim, is that what I'm saying? And the killer is in this chair, is that what they're saying? Or is it Kristoff and... Wait. The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? So the, the witnesses is W? Oh, yeah, it's W. Which position doesn't fit in the bloody with the bloody card? Hold on a second. What are they trying to say here? Is it that they're saying that, like... Should we say... Like, are they saying that, like, for the blood to drip onto the card? Like, how would it drip on the card? His positioning is all wrong. Because that wouldn't make any... Yeah, okay, let's try the victim. Because, like, yeah, his positioning is all wrong. This is... It's quite strange what we'll do it. Well, isn't the victim's position that that's the problem? Good, jo good job, Apollo. I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Mr. Justice is a great name, by the way. Well, look at the victim was struck on... Look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back to his, cha in his chair. You think any blood would fall behind the body, not into the table in front of him? Oh... Take a look at the photo again. If you play in this position, the blood would fall onto the floor, not on the... Was it in his hat? <laughs> not on the cards. That's right, so what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in the swivel chairs. Swivel chairs? Oh, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I want to do that. Recreate the crime? Wait, what? What? Re... Did I miss? I mean, did I miss? I missed some dialogue there, maybe. Did I? Yeah, history. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Oh, try turning the chair around. This chair. Oh, the chair was facing the other way. It would have to be, for the blood to drip down. So we have to assume that the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing from the table, for the drip down into the card. When Mr. Wright returned from reforming the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the bloody fa the blood the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now no we know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Again? He just, he just wants to calm him now at this stage. <laughs> Pain's like, I'm done. <laughs> the 
Let's test your reason skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victim, the killer, the witness, the, the killer. The killer. Because then how would he be able to kill him from this, this position? Yeah, how would he be able to kill him from that position? The victim was struck in the front, correct? Yeah, the forehead. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. But what you're saying it makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe I have sufficient reason it will soon come to light. What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marketing on the diagram. What? But... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's take it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. The crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? In front of him. Like, the, he said try forgetting about the actual space, so I'm guessing he's saying that, like, yeah, this is wrong. But he's saying, like, try to forget about this for now? The killer have to be standing, well, here. Because it's like sideboards and stuff. You get points for flair, but that's all. about all you get. Uh, I thought it was onto something to get there, too. I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? <laughs> it's simple logic, really. Is it? Is it simple logic, Phoenix? If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know. At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there. So someone moved the cupboard? What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Oh, we got him, 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 we got him again. Your Honor, I have a suggestion, suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout. Immediately! Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ah, uh, Your Honor? What? There's one more thing you men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. What is that? Hmm? Uh, yes, I see. You do belong with the courtroom after all, Miss Wright. Of course he does! Of course he does! I do my best. Let's forge ahead while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. The killer was standing here at the time of the crime. Then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. So we can move in treaty again? The window was blocked. The window would have been blocked. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it had to have been shown here. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. <laughs> he's, he's, I can't get over how confident he is. What's this? What is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears he found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh dang. Notice something, Apollo? Yeah, the window's blocked. A line deduction is rapidly approaching this logical conclusion. Now the mistress has please point to the new contradiction in the indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the waitress, the second witness? Which indicator is this diagram contradiction? Um, it's, uh... Here? The window's blocked. About this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, why not? Let's go with that. Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cover will completely cover up the window to the stairs. Oh, that's right, someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What did you say? Oh? Is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? 
Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. Who is this? <laughs> what have you done? And someone was, while the window to the room was uh, blocked by, and someone was, while the window to the, that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain the court to the court? Exactly. Where did you witness the crime scene from? <sighs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Order, this is a court of law and I will have order. We just, we just now received word from our investigative team in the Boar's Club, Wool Club. They've examined the cupboard and the hideout, and Your Honor. Oh? And what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there is a secret passage behind it. What? Oh, my lord. <laughs> that is a big deal. I guess I believe I mentioned something to the sword before. This is one of the tricks to the rune that many of our regulars know about. I do remember saying something about that, now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal going-ons. You never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room is a secret passage? Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. So like it kind of makes sense that in, in kind of it is illegal to gamble, it is illegal to be like to have the like to be doing stuff like this. It kind of makes sense that you would have a secret passageway. Um, very funnily enough, I remember like uh, there was this pub that I will never name that would usually you would let us in when we were like seventeen or whatever. Um, uh, did not let us in when we were seventeen, and he did not have. A secret passage, uh, not a secret passage, a back door that connected to the parking lot that he would tell people to go out if they, if any uh, authorities came in. And it just reminds me of this. <laughs> of course, I don't uh, drink anymore. Not of course. There's nothing wrong with drinking. You do what you want, guys. Um, but yeah, the underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bull abortion, no doubt. Just like our killer. This is very, I love when they do this stuff, it's so tense. I love being back in this game. It makes me feel so happy. Like, I'm overjoyed playing this. Like, I really, like I said on I said on Twitter that I was worried that my voice was going to go. But, like, why I'm actually, like, just, like, it hasn't because, like, I've been so excited to do this. And I think there's, like, some mental ability about it where it's, like, it's just so fun. Uh, you see where a line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. You're getting to do a case with, with Phoenix. It feels good. That girl wasn't kidding when she said you needed this trump card for the last hand. What's uh, Gavin going to come back with, though? At the time of the murder, the window was blocked in the victim's hat. It was only off his head for a few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return for, uh, from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, come on, say something. Oh, God, he's going to come back with something. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. Dual destinies? There he crouched, hidden in a secret passageway behind the cupboard. Holding his breath, waiting for the right moment. Then the chance came. And he took it. So why would he do this? So what's the reason? What? Why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Yeah, why would he do that? Miss Olga really was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But this time was, too, was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops. Leaving Mr. Shoddy Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. So we're, we're saying that he did hit Miss O'Reilly. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... That's horrible. Okay, I'm just gonna wheel my chair around here just for fun. <laughs> After the deed was done, the criminal must have been seen... Uh, must have seen the blood in the card. He would have, of course, realized he needed to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story, which is why he replaced the card. He did have three aces. Olga really was not lying for a second in this trial. Maybe about the strangulation and stuff. Too bad for him he didn't linger any... Uh, he didn't He didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. Yeah, and I will say that, like, I don't... Maybe o, o really wasn't lying, and maybe what actually happened was that, like, you know, getting struck over the head or the back of the neck, knocking you out, would make you delirious and make you probably, like, see... You know, you'd think... Like, for me, like, I, I find, like... 
even when I had like I had a dream the other night, like a like a half bad dream, a half good dream. And I remember like for like the rest of the day, like at one point I was like cooking dinner and I was like, oh, that was weird when that happened. Like, but then I was like, wait, no, it didn't happen. You know what I mean? It's like it didn't happen. And it's like like it's weird, like how like you know when you when you're in between reality and like a kind of a dream state or a fugue state or kind of like uh, being. Um, you know, unconscious or like like sleeping or whatever. It's weird how like you know reality can kind of feel weird and can kind of shift a little bit. You know, at least that's where I see it. If he had if he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor, and the fact that they were all red. There's so much evidence here at this point, but the problem is I don't know how decisive it is to just put him away and make him be the killer. It doesn't seem to decisive enough. Well, it seems the trial has taken yet another turn. I can't get over how good the music is in this game. I'm truly sorry I have to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin. This has to, yeah, it has to be tough for Apollo. Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The prosecution will continue this investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Ah! Wait, what? No, what? Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately, there's no way. There's no, yeah, I knew it. There was no way. There was no way in hell he was letting this go. No need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Dirty tactics? You, you do not know the trenches I grew up in. You would not survive the trenches we all grew up in. Three games of having to deal with everyone's dirty tactics. We know what dirty tactics are, and you know, they are kind of dirty tactics in a way. They are, you know, we are doing, we are, we are doing like very um, underhanded tactics, but it's the only way we could like really trick a trickster, I guess. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked. That a person of your caliber will be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Uh, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence that puts the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else. Me, his own defense attorney. Oh, the twitching of the mouth as well. He's trying to act calm, but he is very, very frustrated. Illegal evidence? Objection. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course, this bottle, for instance. Bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? He said he put the card in the bottle. Right? Uh, actually... Yes, the fingerprints on the bottle were um, upside down. Because he was opening the bottle? It seemed to recall this being an issue earlier. Right? The court in this case demanded an explanation. I can think of only one reason why we'd hold the bottle upside down, and that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor. Ah, uh, see, now that caught the codfish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Yes. Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Uh, yeah, just like what? Would anyone grab a bottle? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to gulp it? I carry bottles upside down like that because, like, it makes me feel like a big tough boy. I walk around with the bottle and I go, hey, this is my bottle. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Hello everyone, I've taken over the world with this bottle and I'm your grandfather for the rest of your life. And you're all my grandfather too! Uh, don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Is there a, a really, is there really a, uh, another? Take a look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. How about you say the answer in plain words? So he says, take a look at the court record, you'll find an answer in plain sight. Of why he would pick up the bottle in this way. So another bottle was on the table. Yeah, it's not the phone. It's for sure not the phone. It's...
Wait. Are we saying it's like something like... That like he had to... Like I thought it was just a card. Maybe not? Because my, my, me looking at these pictures here... Like the only thing I can think of is that like... If, the, if one of these is Phoenix's bottle... Would he have to grab it in a... But the thing is, like, he wouldn't, though. Would he? He's not going to try and hit someone over the head with this bottle like this. Wait a second. No, 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 no. No. No? So the bottles are right beside him here. I'm trying to... Okay, I'm, I'm trying to do it myself right now, okay? I'm trying to do it myself. Um, let's, let's try and do this ourselves. In fact, uh, hold on one second, guys. Um, you probably won't be able to see this, but I'm actually using, um, like, my camera on my iPad to see how I would Oh. That's awkward. Okay. It's not too awkward, but I can imagine. Maybe if we stretch it out a bit? It'd be less awkward actually stretching it out. I'm, like, moving my hand to where a bottle would be. Is this, is this what we're saying here? That's actually not that awkward at all. Like moving, grabbing the bottle from beside you. If there's a bit of a distance, grabbing it like this isn't too far fetched, but still, it's not. I'm trying to, like. Okay. Maybe you could say he did. He, he, he was, it's the only one I can really think of. Is that what we're saying? That like, like maybe you just grab the bottle to use it? Because I was thinking the card was the answer. But if it's in plain sight, like we could use the, unless we can use the card. It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with all the answer questions indeed. Well, Mr. Justice, Mr. Gavin sent to the court and this case demand an explanation. Don't worry, Justice won't leave until, ju uh, Justice won't leave until justice is done. That's a good catchphrase. Perhaps the defense will care to invite light in the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? We'll go with the picture, because if it's in plain sight, there's nothing else here. There is nothing else here that would would, would indicate it, unless you like you. Do, it's either this or the carrot, so we'll try both of them. It's actually easier to show you than uh, than explain, Your Honor. Place the bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me, on the floor? Yes. Now reach down and pick it up, without getting out of the ch your chair. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. Like for me, it's like. You could pick it up to... It, we're getting... I think we're getting the right idea here. But, like, again, for me, like, you could pick it up both ways. It's not, like, awkward or anything. Unless, like, there's a better explanation. That I, usually there is a better explanation. So you naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. Yes. With your fingers upside down. I guess so. I guess so. Like, this is what we, I was trying to do. Like, I was like, see, what way would you pick it up from beside him? And, like, for me, it's like... Is that... Are we agreeing with this? What do you guys think about this? Because for me, like, I think both ways are natural. Like, they don't, don't, like... The other, upside down is less natural, maybe, actually. But then again, maybe it's the positioning. I don't know. This is all we got, though, so we'll go with it. <laughs> I really want to hear your guys' take on this. Uh, look at this photograph taken of the night of the murder. This is the only one that was in plain sight as well, so it's the only one that kind of makes sense, either. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano. The balls of grape juice on the floor to the side of the piano bench. You would have naturally picked up the balls upside down several times. What? Uh, am I? You, can you guys explain to me, like, because me, like, it, it's I picked this because it's the only one in plain sight, and like, I guess that's kind of the same reasoning I had, which is picking up the bottle. But like, to me, like, both ways are natural. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then too. Basically, used the bottle on the table to do the deed. But then you must have remembered. 
So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like a murder weapon. I could be just a big idiot and I'm not understanding like the actual positioning thing because while I get it, I get that like, we, we came to a similar conclusion. When I was testing it out myself there, like it felt like I could pick up with both. Maybe, again, it is probably positioning for him. So like, I'm, I'm also like sitting in a different chair. I'm also like doing it like... I guess he's saying you'd have to move a bit out of your chair because like when I took, like if I do the normal pull down, I don't. But if I do the other one, maybe I do. Weird. Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's fame tactic of misdirection. Uh, what? You claim that I switched the bottle. Where is your proof? Uh, proof? Uh, well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! I'm not so sure about that. He's doing a lot of objections here. We're happy for it. The little hint of Phoenix hair out the back is really cute, too. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I request an additional investigation? Yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottle from under the piano at the Porsche Cub. And here's one of the bottles in, the qu in question. Hm. What are you going to do, dust it for fingerprints? I'd be surprised if any were on that but his. Mr. Gavins probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake. True, yes. The bottle won't bear a trace of anything. How are you holding up, Apollo? Because this has to be tough. It has to be tough. I keep saying it, but it has to be tough. Say, Apollo. Yes? Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But, but why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. The card! The card is there! What? Okay. <laughs> we're, a little, we're a little bit off. The card's there. The five of hearts, there's something inside the bottle. Oh my god, that is the bottle that was at the table. What's this? A card. It can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Our Miss Olga Orly? Yes, our little swindling devoca devocha? Devocacha? That night I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost that last hand just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you dispose of? The one you mentioned in the piece of testimony? I went to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Dispose? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking uh, right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. Man, this is so sick. I love these games so much. <laughs> I really do. The five hearts, this is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done it was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Oh, no. Yes, the breakdown. Wait, that's also like, that's O'Reilly stuff as well. Is she still unconscious down there? <laughs> Please don't be still unconscious down there. Oh, we love a good breakdown. We love a good breakdown. Oh, Phoenix, you love a good breakdown too. That is all. Is this your idea of revenge? Phoenix Wright. Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete-a-tete. Tete-a-tete, right? This, this is insane. What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anymore? <laughs> anyone? Sorry, anyone. <laughs> he just wants he just wants to go home now at this stage, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
Oh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's over. I think it's over. I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything we're processing his arrest. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shoddy Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. An odd profession to be sure. Ah, uh, that's all we uh, know about him. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, you wanna. Good, Mr. Wright. Yes. Seven years and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and as a lawyer. He was extremely talented to be sure. What must have happened in these seven years to make Phoenix this way though? I need two, two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney, you Apollo. Me? This is a dark time for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own initial trial system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright. Our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds an offended Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty. <laughs> we did it. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Our first not guilty. That was fun. That was really fun. That was a really great first trial. That's how you, To me, like that's like a, a perfect length for a first trial as well. Court is adjourned. April 20th, 4.28pm. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Thanks, Apollo. Oh, we're having- Oh my god, this music- I love when they play like a happy song at the end of the trials. Let's listen to it for a second. The music is already like instantly like iconic. You came through just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing here. It was you who cornered Mr. Gav, the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yes, the sensitive sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment of the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Of course it's true. Oh, so that vibe. What was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer, right. Today was full of questions without answers, most of them uh, about Ga about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have uh, to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Well, that reminds me, I met the girl whose picture's in your locket. Yeah, the girl. Do you get the vibes of Mia off this girl? Is that just me? Who gets a Mia vibe? Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Uh... I took this off the neck uh, the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, the locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury. You testified. You said that the locket was yours. I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it is the truth. Yeah, he's telling the truth the whole time. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket uh, uh, with a picture of your daughter inside it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of job. I work for uh, Gavin Law Offices after all. Oh yeah. I just can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo? Yes? How about coming to work for me? What? <laughs> yes? Uh, you mean at the Wright & Co. Law Offices? No way. I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Uh, I keep getting the voice lines on. That was what Apollo said, but still, that's pretty freaking cool. Of course you want to work there. Wait, but didn't you... You're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. 
But he can still own a law office, I suppose, and hire attorneys. That incident seven years ago. The legendary trial. And in the middle of it all was one man. Phoenix Wright. The case reached a sad conclusion, and he left law for good. Whoa. What, like, like, for him to, like, he's seen some of the worst things in history. Like, what would make him leave law for good? Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in the court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a, was a single piece of a forged evidence. There was a single piece of forged evidence. Forged? What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Hmm. One piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. The trump card? I'll bet this was the forged evidence. Does he mean the trump card? Yep. You mean this, don't you? I got this from your um, uh, daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. So, leaving the wrong card in its place, luckily for us. Did a magician take the- did your daughter as a magician take the card? <laughs> that court cannot accept this evidence. It's fra a fraud. So it is a fraud. How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. So did you, you did learn a lot from previous uh, trials. My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then, you really... Yes, I forged this card. So he's saying, like, I'm not a lawyer anymore, so, like, I don't I don't play by those rules anymore. I don't care. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But... You can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. He doesn't. Who's calling themselves an attorney? Apollo. He, he doesn't call himself an attorney. So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago... None of that matters much now, does it? Uh. I punched him. What? It's your story from here out on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. So wait, in the trial seven years ago, did he forge evidence and get caught for it? There's no way. My office address drop in and we will, but like, no way. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling. Take that. Next time. Oh, God. <laughs> I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. Yeah, I imagine the adrenaline comes back rushing to you. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find out soon enough, so it's gonna be a connected trial like it was in like, uh... uh a few other games actually had connected trials, but I think one of the ones I always think of as Ace Attorney Chronicles, the first game, uh, had a few connected trials. My name is Apollo Justice, Attorney of Law, and this is how my story begins. Wow, very good first trial. I think the perfect length, I think it was the perfect story, I think the added, I think what happens with this trial is, they let you like learn so much about uh, Apollo, but at the same time, like, you also, like, learned a little bit about Phoenix, so there's still intriguing things of how, like, he, he's, like, how he's gonna play into this and what happened to him, uh, more stuff about Gavin, uh, I think also at the same time stuff about his daughter, but also I think what's interesting about Apollo is now it's like, how is he gonna respond to this, um, invitation to come work for him, but also, is he going to still respect Phoenix at this stage, because he did punch him in the face, um, and now we have this mystery going into the next part of this game. I'm super excited to see where all of this goes. I really am. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons who support this series all the time and support this channel all the time. Thanks to Typharo2, Jamie Bull, Janet the Banana, Normal Kara, The Ghost of Inazuma, Felicious Felix, George Candelaria, Eskun, Yuld, Radish, Fruity, Orange Bang, Summer Oasis, Death Trap, Anusta, Chibrata Bread, and Malcolm Conde for being the Can Never Pay the Baby Gangster here on Patreon. And thank you to all patrons. And I'll see you for trial number two.